service should not translate into poor quality. And his philosophy, food with integrity, seems to be working. As John Berman now reports for our series, You Are What You Eat. On this happy farm, beside the happy fields, live some very happy pigs. <laughs> One day they'll become happy meals, but not that kind. It seems like an odd place to be talking to a guy who is running a, a fast food empire. Yes? <laughs> not not so odd, really. I think it's I think it's really important that that uh, people know where their food comes from. I mean, we spend a lot of time researching the very best sources, uh, so that when people go to Chipotle, they can rest assured they're getting great food. Steve Ells is the founder and chairman of Chipotle quickly becoming the burrito behemoth, 870 restaurants and counting. Steve certainly cares what goes on in each of the 870 restaurants, but he might be even more concerned about what happens here. Why did you come here? Why this farm? Well, I mean, Joel is a leader in this in this movement um, and and really doing things sort of the way the way they should be done and is a great example for everybody. Uh, to follow. Joel Salatin is the owner of Polyface Farms, nestled in the hills of Swoop, Virginia. He has a different way of raising his pigs. He wants them, well, happy. They live in the woods and they get to fully express their pigness. Uh, this fully respects and honors the pigness of a pig. And, you know, in, the, in our culture today, um, our Western, you know, reductionist, Greco, Roman, linear, fragmented, disconnected, systematized, all parts oriented culture, we don't ask how to make a pig happy. We ask how do we grow them faster, fatter, bigger, cheaper. And uh, that's not a noble goal. Chipotle is one of Joel's biggest customers because Steve Ells is a fast food mogul who cares about the <laughs> pigness of the pig. Chipotle buys no pork from factory farms. Why? First of all, you can breathe here and it smells great. Um, you can't breathe in a confinement operation. Uh, the odor is horrific. And you can see the, the terror in the pig's eyes, and they scurry away from you. And when I first saw that 10 years ago, I knew that I never wanted to buy another confinement pig uh, and have that be part of our business model. 100% of the chickens that we serve are served a vegetarian diet um, and not given antibiotics. And uh, most of our beef now uh, is, comes from the naturally raised protocol with no hormones and, and uh, antibiotic free. They have a few thousand farms like Joel's providing meat around the country. Was this one morning you woke up and said, you know, I want to help the earth? Well, it, it wasn't really like that. Uh, when I started Chipotle 16 years ago, uh, I wanted to show that just because uh, we serve food quickly and conveniently doesn't mean that we have to be a typical fast food experience. And so we cooked uh, fresh ingredients uh, in front of the customer in an open kitchen. There was nothing to hide. Uh, there was total transparency. And the carnitas. Steve is actually a classically trained chef. After cooking school in 1993, he opened his first Chipotle, a burrito shop in Denver. It was supposed to be a stepping stone to a real restaurant. I was this aspiring chef, but I needed, I needed a little cash cow. I needed something that could fund my restaurant. So I started Chipotle. Do you like being called fast food? Do you prefer not to be called fast food? Just because it's fast doesn't mean it has to be a typical fast food experience. Uh, you can you can cook great pork, like the pork from Joel's farm, and you can spend hours, you know, braising it to perfection. Uh, but then it only takes seconds to serve. For all the talk about green pastures and animal splendor, the financial engine behind Chipotle was something not often associated with nature's way. McDonald's. McDonald's was the major investor in Chipotle until it sold its shares in 2006. One of my early investors had suggested that I that I go to McDonald's, and they liked what we were doing. And so for a seven-year period, uh, they funded the growth. Are you happier now that they're not involved? Well, I think that I think that both of us wanted to to go our own way. Chipotle is now free of the golden arches, but all of this freshness and focus on where the food comes from is hardly free. This isn't cheap for you. 
It's not. Uh, Chipotle has higher food costs than, than our competitors. Much higher, right? A little bit higher, but we have a business model that allows us to, to invest in higher quality food. Um, and and um, it's great because obviously this higher quality food tastes better, which brings people back and it forms a, a deep bond with the customer. It's also hard finding enough farms like Joel's to make it work. Any person that didn't have as much passion as Steve did would have just quit. All parties win. And it's better tasting food, and by a long shot. By a long shot, yeah. it's better tasting food. Is this good business? Well, it is good business. It's, it's, it's a sustainable business, and it's a great business model. So I think the more customers understand the importance of where their food comes from, uh, the, the better we are prepared to, to show them what this guy's doing. <laughs> These guys are having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> this is serious stuff here, and they're uh, they're playing in the mud hole. They are happy, healthy pigs. As for the burritos, well, that's up to you. You can't pack them full of calories. As delicious as this is, this is this is no diet burrito here. Either way, business is up during the recession. But does Steve care more about saving the planet than customers do? Do you wish people appreciated it more? Well, I think they will appreciate it more. Uh, again, this is a journey. It's not like you can flip a switch and have 100% you know, free-ranging uh, beef and chicken and pork uh, on the menu of every restaurant in the United States. It doesn't happen that way. This is, this is something that's going to take time. Uh, but I think the movement is gaining steam now. I like to just peel the foil back a little bit. It's not clear whether you can taste social responsibility, but you can taste a good burrito. So whether or not you can taste a happy pig this is a happy meal. Delicious. Yeah. I'm John Berman for Nightline in Swoop, Virginia.